Okay, so now we're on to hard mode of the Under Coliseum. This is a brand new day for me because we did originally have this done, but there was a lot of audio clipping issues. Like, it, it kind of like deleted milliseconds of audio, so my words would fuse together. And that's that was a problem. Plus, doing just the under by itself took me an hour and a half, and I wasn't exactly too keen with the performance going through it, so I have no regrets about doing this a second time. I don't remember this guy's strategy or if he was hard or not, but I will think here. Right now I'm thinking in Gygus and Slowbro, and that basically takes care of everybody other than Spindo, which I remember saying Spindo's not a threat. I'm also thinking Hoptart, because I want to say I used Hoptart before. Um... I guess I'm gonna go Stone Sour for backup. That's the best idea I've got. Hopefully, I don't regret this. I remember this first fight not being so bad, but um, the next fight's terrible, and I'm dreading doing it a second time. It took me like four attempts to clear. I used up every single one of my continues, and then it was the very last fight, and it's like, all right, I'm out of continues. We either win this or we lose this. We won it, but like. The audio was kind of messed up, and it was just a lot of video that I'm hoping can be shortened down immensely. So we're, we're giving this another shot anyway. So I only edited, I think, like maybe the first two fights, so I didn't even remember anything else I said. Other than, which is the only real thing of importance that I would want to say, um, do or don't. I kind of want to focus on the Spinda. Oh, I could double team the Weezy. Well, let's, uh, we'll just hope for the best. Um, that the Under Coliseum to me looks the best. I love the visuals of it. I feel like if anything benefited from the HD treatment, it would be this environment. It just looks so pretty. I love all the neon signs and everything, and my fondest memory with this place is discovering, um, what you call it, Gorbis. During the story mode, you can sometimes come down here in the other under, and then one of the ver one of the finalists will be carrying a Gorbis on his team. And when I first saw it, I was like, "Oh my god, that is the coolest Pokemon! I want it! I need it!" So that is that is my memory with this place that is the that is my favorite thing about the under is it makes me think of gorbis i love the visuals of this place it'd be pretty it'd look really nice with the hd treatment i think and now that's coming from a guy who says gamecube onward really doesn't need it but i feel like in terms of the lighting and stuff it would look pretty cool it looks this is the best looking area of the game period but it could like imagine how much better it could look you know also, it's been bugging me looking at, especially in editing, looking at Slowbro's lower part, half of his jaw. It looks so frighteningly unnatural. So I can't quite get over that. Um, I got a better idea. Let's do this, and then you can go ahead and kill a Spinda. Because I don't know how, we, like, I don't like fighting Grumpig as well. Grumpig is always irritating as hell for me to fight, so I'm going to just do something that I know will do some damage, it'll be okay. I also took down a couple notes of things that I should have meant- oh well here, let me go on. Slowbro's mouth bothers me, it looks uncomfortable, and in case you didn't know, because I'm pretty sure I said this the next day, I wouldn't put it past myself because I know me. Um, all these models are just the same ones from previous games, so... That Slowbro you're looking at is the Slowbro from Pokemon Stadium. That Zatu is the Zatu from Pokemon Stadium 2. Obviously, Grumpig's a brand new model, but the older ones are just that. They're older ones. That's why Slowbro looks so uncomfortably creepy. It's because of that. I also took notes of things that, like, when I was on my little spiel and I just kept going on and on and on, I was like, oh, I can't believe I didn't mention this or that. Um, there was a character I didn't get the, I didn't 
talk about, and what's funny is it was actually one of the first characters we fought during the, uh, thing. The very, in Phoenix, it was a rich boy, and that character joke was Fairly Odd Parents, Remy Buxaplenty. So anytime we'd see the rich boy inside the Coliseum, I don't remember if they're an XD, but we'd always just make fun of Remy Buxaplenty. The, I win, kind of thing that he'd do. That was always the most fun, quotable line we had. But that that was another joke character that we'd play around with. Was, But we didn't make up our own. It was just Remy. That was it. The joke was just Remy. Remy bucks a plenty. And then as far as other YouTube influences, because I was going on about other people I used to watch, another one that I used to love watching in Good lore, the influence is incredibly high there if you watch any of my really old videos. There was a guy I used to watch, his name was Heartless. He would basically do a lot of horror survival games. And that was like the old, that was his niche. But he he was very goofy and over the top and I that that rubbed off on me a lot. So that was I miss Heartless so much. He hasn't done anything in like I don't know six five years something like that he just eventually decided he he could go on with life now because I have little faith in this I'm gonna save my other topics and maybe continue on about heartless after we get this fight done because I hate this this is just one hit kills for everyone so you have to like take your chances on it I wanna say I did I know I had Gengar and, uh, and Lita but I don't think I ever had him out at the same time. I want to say Hotshot was there as well, because Hotshot makes life easier. Put Lita, and I don't remember if it was Stone Sour or Zatu. I think Zatu would be smarter, considering they're all water types and Stone Sour is slow. So, that's probably going to be the way we do it. But this fight sucks. I hate it. This is where it took me a bunch of tries, because, like, what I would do is I'd use Hypnosis, which is 55% accuracy. And I'd never land a hypnosis. And then they would do fissure, sheer cold, horn drill. That's 30% accurate. They would always hit. And it doesn't matter if you have items that enhance accuracy. That's still a lower percentage than what I was dealing with. So there's still no reason for that to happen. Uh, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? I'm trying to think, because I'm basically trying to play out who's the bigger threat. In my mind, it's Walrein, because he can hit two guys, plus it's like, if I shoot, yeah, see, I figured if I chose to hit Wish Cash, then Hypnosis was probably going to fail. That's it. I just have to bank on things messing up, because they typically mess up. That's just my luck. But these guys are so fucking irritating. Um... I know the Whiskash has Fissure, which doesn't intimidate me too much just because I have two Pokemon that aren't going to be, uh, get hurt that are, will resi they're immune because they fly or levitate and that's basically it. That's where Sheer Cold is more dangerous because it can hit everybody. I don't know if it, Ice types are immune to it actually, but... If anyone were, it would be them, and, well, I don't have any ice types on this team. Yeah, I don't. I just have someone with a nice move, and that's about it. Okay, um, what to do with you, then? Because I kind of don't know if I want to ways. We can try Shadow Ball, see how much it does. And then just Flamethrower Wall Rain, because we don't need to waste anything on him trying to figure out how to do the most damage to him as possible. And unfortunately, Ghost being a physical type doesn't really play well with Gengar right now. So, that sucks. But, I figured it was worth trying. More accurate, guaranteed, than Cross Chop. Now, Pinsir seems to be very hit or miss. Sometimes, um, I can flamethrower Pinsir and he'll just die. 
And a lot of the times, I'll flamethrower pincer and he'll just live. So that's one thing that's annoyingly inconsistent is the success of knocking out pincer. But I'm going to hope that either he'll die right now or he'll live with like 2 HP. Yeah, 14. It's, that doesn't surprise me. Guillotine is also is at least kind of nice because... Well, Gengar is immune to that, so we're going to go ahead and do or don't. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and Shadow Ball him again, then we'll flame her him again. I was basically thinking, like, who should who should attack Whizcash? That was pretty much what it came down to. That was good. I like critical hits. This is how it should be done right now. Half of his team is down. One is about to be down next turn, and then it just comes down to. I'm not gonna like. Alright, Smeargle. Smeargle, that's like one of the best strategies you can give Smeargle. Because Smeargle's stats are abysmal. So. We'll take our chances, I suppose. Smeargle's got like no attack, hardly any defense, his best stats like speed, so one hit kill moves basically make him usable, so that's the best advice I can give you. I'm also pretty proud of this because I know no one else that's ever thought of it, transforming Smeargle. Wow, it worked. We actually did this on our first try. That's my idea, transforming Smeargle. Then you can turn Smeargle into something, you could use a Smeargle and a Ditto on a team if you wanted to. It's also beneficial in things like double and triple battles. So I've always joked about it, I never did it, but I always thought it would be funny to do a triple battle with Smeargle, Darkrai, and um, Ditto. And then they just both transform into Darkrai, and then I just have three Darkrais. Dark Void, and then like triple bad dreams. Like, that idea is hilarious to me, because I know everybody hates Darkrai. So that's why I think the idea is really funny, and I thought it would be fun to do. But now that I know for a fact that that footage is going to be kept, and I'm probably going to hate myself, because this one will probably mess up. Wait, firstly, let me think. Right now I'm thinking instantly Hotshot, because... Actually, Hoptart would probably be just... Uh... Hoptart guarantees half the team is dead. Hotshot guarantees the fortress and some flora are dead. Um, Gengar guarantees Muck Mantine is dead. Also, Hotshot gets rid of Glalie. I forgot about Glalie. So that's half the team, too. Um, Stone Sour is a bad idea. Slowbro is a bad idea. And then Lead is kind of neutral. Because half of his team... Well, I mean, Stone Sour is the worst idea. Because his whole team, basically, except for... Two thirds of his team kill Stone Sour, as to where Slowbro is only dang risky for the Sunflora and Lombre. I think Slowbro is a better idea than Lita. Okay, uh, going back though, because again, I had you know little faith in the one-hit kill team. Uh, Heartless. One of my favorite LPs he's ever done. And, like, one that I would recommend. Look at it if you want to laugh your ass off. Resident Evil 5. That was, that was so much of, like, the funniest thing I ever saw on YouTube. And, oh, it's so good. It's just so good. I can't praise it enough. That was one of my favorites. He did Homecoming. I remember liking that. Especially the end, the last episode of Homecoming. Where like, he did like a little music video. I thought that was really cool. Um, but yeah, that was, that was another huge influence. Another one, which I feel also, again, makes me vastly different from everyone else on YouTube, is another huge thing that took up almost all of my time as far as watching content on YouTube and made me want to do videos of this nature was Rock Band. And it was great because at the height of like Rock Band's popularity when they were releasing weekly DLC like that was it. Once a week I got to see brand new songs and get excited and be like oh my gosh this is awesome. Like there was uh, I Bite Pretty Hard, As We Write Reaction, uh, Sick Hands. Those were the main ones I watched. 
I guess Guitar Hero Phenom, but he didn't really do it like that. He just is like, look, I can play through Fire and the Flames without missing a note. And it's like, we're proud of you, son. And that was that was the main thing with Phenom was that, and then he'd get like a lot of custom songs. I know that Phenom still exists and still does things. Um, Sick Hands is done. Azurite switched to doing like gaming videos, which you know it makes sense in his case if he wanted to keep doing stuff on YouTube, because you know. Rock band stuff's risky, especially nowadays compared to back then. Back then it was a little bit less of an issue, but now with things like making money off of YouTube, which again wasn't a huge thing when I first joined, that kind of changes. So that was that. I did record. It sucks because I feel like once I had the chance to record rock band content it was it was too little too late and that's what kind of bugs me the most is it's like once I finally got the chance to like be in on it it was over and it was done with and I hate that there is a channel I, don't, I think it was like the new Leon Cruz or something like that that's one that actually still does do rock band content to this day um, they do like full band stuff so you can at least see the chart which is nice because I play bass I don't think that's actually a secret I think everyone knows that basically but yeah that so seeing bass charts which was good that's why I like sick hands and then drum stuff was just really cool and McFuggles was the drummer so some it's it was cool seeing what they did and I also know which is kind of why I like it doesn't bother me but like for things like with Azurite and I Bite Pretty Hard, what they would do is they'd have like a side cam, of course, so you could see them playing the drums, but you could also hear it. So hearing them actively play never seemed like out of the ordinary or weird or anything like that. It just made sense with the song because, you know, you want to hear it. If you're like trying to imitate someone, that kind of information is important. Um, which is also why I was like, you know, if I ever do it, you know, I'd you'd want like a finger cam, a fret cam. Sick Hands never did that. His, his was just a game. Phenom showed his fingers. There was one video I did where it actually was me playing Guitar Hero 5. That was a custom Banjo-Kazooie song. That was actually my favorite video I think I've ever made purely because that was the type of stuff that like influenced me to join YouTube. Well, it excited me, that kind of stuff. Um... Right now I'm seeing Slowbro and Gygus, and then as far as Dryfrig and Wigglytuff goes, like that could be just about anyone. I mean, that's what sucks. Dryfrig's such an asshole typist where Gygus can't really do too much to it. Part of me is feeling like Stone Sour anyway, just because it's like, well, first, firstly, Stone Sour can work on Wigglytuff, but it also serves as backup for Camera Up and Camera Up. Torkoal can rock slide Zaw too, so I think that's a good idea. Hot Shot's a bad idea, and I'm also, I don't know, I'm thinking Zaw too. Lita, unfortunately, probably wouldn't be too beneficial because it would just only have an advantage against Wailord and the disadvantage against Torkoal and Camera Ups. And Zaw too, so we'll just take our Owen Zaw too and just do that. But those, those were the three other topics that I was thinking about while editing. I was like, I can't believe I didn't say this. It, I should have definitely talked. Yeah, don't erase that, because remember, if recordings go awry, which I think I've said already. I don't remember if I said. I think I might have said it in Breath of the Wild, but one thing. No, actually, I think it was during Mount Battle. Um, I love about this capture card is the fact that recordings just don't fail. They just don't. And that was always one of the biggest annoyances, was having to re-record stuff. So now I can only yell at Elgato for being shit. I've tried, actually, because um, Elgato comes with its own built-in recording software, but I could also use it with OBS. I tried that once, and I, yeah, I talked about it during the Breath of the Wild. It didn't delete the footage, but instead it just ran at a smooth two frames a second, so I'd rather 
not do that. Plus, I think it looks better on um, the built-in recorder that they provide anyway, so I'd rather do that. Now, what's fun about the move, because I noticed it used eruption, and the whaler that would have a water spout, is that like it's it's super powerful as long as you don't get hit, and then the more damage you take, the less power it has, so it kind of sucks. But it's it's a cool move, but it's also very risk versus reward if you use it. Leftovers is a good strategy to use, utilize. Ah, look, water spout. That's probably not gonna hurt. Like at all. Look at how little health it has. Yeah, I didn't do anything, but I'm water. That did a little something, but Gengar has like no defenses, so keep that in mind. So it, it didn't do shit. Why? Oh, Delta Team, that's right. I'm like, why is Waylord suddenly dodging everything? This one wasn't even memorable to me. I remember fight number seven was another one I messed up on. That burned my last continue, but again, most of it was fight number two that sucked it all up. We'll hit you one day, I hope. Do I have any fixed attacks? I just kind of did surf out of habit. Okay, there, he's dead. That sorts out whether or not we have any. Actually, yeah, we do. Um, Stone Sour, he's got faint attack. Though that's not a good idea. That would be the way I would have to go about it. Alright, well, whatever. This fight's basically over. Also, I, I, I've noticed, and I'm sure you guys have too, I haven't been too concerned about getting perfects or continues or anything like that. It doesn't really matter to me. So, if someone dies, they die. That's it. Wow, that really hurt. I didn't expect to do that much. I don't consider Wigglytuff as... good. I consider Wigglytuff as like, yeah, it's got a lot of health and that's about it. It's got like a little bit of attacking potential, but like... not enough to do that. Nightshade looks like... 53. Okay, so it wouldn't kill it. I'd be just shy. Okay, goodbye, friend. That was an easy one. Okay, here's a, here's another thing, actually, that's like kind of relevant to YouTube that I could go ahead and talk about. We can go ahead and talk about that one too. One thing that always irks me, and I hate seeing people do this, because I feel like they're doing it for the wrong reasons, is like, this is gonna sound bad, but hear me out. You're gonna have to wait a second to figure out what it is I'm gonna say, because I gotta think. Okay, Gygus, Stone Sour, Lita, Slowbro. Okay, what I was gonna say, and like, it, it sounds bad, but it's it's not like that. It irritates me to see people doing charity streams as a means to, like... I feel like they're doing it to get popular. Because, like, I would never do one unless I felt I had a strong enough standing to actually make something like that possible or worthwhile. So, what I mean by that is I hate seeing people, like... Hey guys, can you like retweet me so I can do a charity stream? It's like if you don't have that kind of like following or standing, are you sure you should be even doing it to begin with? Because in other words, it kind of looks like you're just using other people to gain viewers to be like, Oh, look at this guy. They're a nice guy. They're doing a charity stream. I should care about them. And it's like that's that feels dirty to me. And I don't like that. I personally would never do something like that. That just, I don't know, it doesn't sit right with me. It makes me uncomfortable. Okay, so they just sent out Swalot. Yeah, Swalot, okay. I don't know, that's just a thing I feel like I see way too often. And Like, I know you can do what you want anyway, but one of the biggest things with me is, like, 
don't beg for attention. Don't ask, like, hey, could you watch this? Could you follow me? Could you care about... No. Do you know what you don't do in real life? You don't walk up to someone and you say, can you give me $100? Do you do that? No, you don't. Then don't ask me to give you my valuable time, effort, and pretend to care about you. Like, it's the same thing. You're asking someone you don't know for something so they can care about you. Like, you shouldn't have to ask. Like, by asking, you're automatically, you've like, you're done. You've lost my interest. I don't care about you anymore. You're worthless. Bye-bye. That's it. I'm done. Like, I don't, I don't care. If I find that you're worthwhile or interesting, I'll do it my own way. I'll do it because I want to, not because you told me to. That's another thing that irritates me. Like, I saw someone tweet, and they're like, Hey, by the way, you guys should follow me? I only tweet that good shit. I'm like, well, now you're a worthless human being to me. Like, I just... I don't understand the concept of, like, begging for stuff like that. Why do that? I figured that would have been a thing people would have outgrown by now, but I guess no one really has. Or, again, it's just a bunch of other, like, next generation people coming in doing that or something? I don't know. Like, remember when people did sub for sub, and it's like, well, I never did that, do you know why? Because what good is having 20,000 subscribers and 25 views? That doesn't matter, that's worthless. If anything, that, like, that throws more shade and attention onto you. Okay, so for this, right now, I'm thinking Gygus and Lita here. Just to go ahead, double team out Melodic, Corsola, Dawn Fan, uh, the Cradley I never really liked. So with that, I'm thinking Lita as well. I think I'll take my chances with Hotshot. I know I said it's a bad idea, but like, Stone Sour is a worse idea because everyone can kill him and then like with Slowbro it just comes down to the speed aspect of it which it's like yes like I want an easier way and a reliable way to be able to kill the Meganium which is kind of where I'm getting at you know thinking about that kind of stuff actually you know what I remember this fight I killed everything but that Meganium and Meganium was the last thing I had to fight, and it was a nightmare to fight. I remember this now. Shit. Okay, well here's what I'm gonna do. Put it to sleep, because I think what we did was we paralyzed it, and then like, as a result, I couldn't do anything like Dream Eater to it, which fucked me over, and I think Stone Sour or someone had to like, faint attack it to death? Which also made things really, really fucking bad. Oh yeah, that's why. Um, why is everything gotta be such a liability right now? You try ancient power, hope for that. I, oh my god, like, cause they're both so dangerous right now. Zangus is not a, a thing to play with either. Like, I need to get rid of him before he starts, like slashing my team completely out of there, but, like, I know that Meganium's a pain in the ass, mostly, again, because of counter. So, like, I gotta be careful. Wait, isn't Ancient Power? Damn it, that would be considered a physical attack. I was busy thinking about the part of, like, Ancient Power special! And it's like, but, okay, remember what generation you're in. This sucks. Uh, psh, psh, psh. I don't want to paralyze it. <laughs> just, just double team the Zangus. Zangus should be easy enough to kill. Cause see, I knew if I just relied on body slam, it's just gonna take forever. And I don't know how good, how responsive this game is to having 
multiple sleeping Pokemon. So that's where I'm like, I'm, I'll try, but I kind of have a bad feeling. And I don't know even want to chance Thunderbolt because I don't want to chance Paralyzing it. See, like it failed. It didn't even try. And I figured that's probably why, because Zangoose is right there. As for now, if I tried, it might have actually worked. Alright, well that at least actually gives us something to focus on then. Because now what we can do is we can Frenzy Plant the Dawn Fan and we can... Um... Hypnosis the Meganium. I don't know if the... I think most of these guys are actually counter Mirror Coat. I think that's the strategy of this because I want to say the Melodic has Mirror Coat. Don't quite remember, but I want to say that was the idea. Which now I remember it all. I did it! I did this fight! It turned out okay, it just took fucking forever. Just try and put it to sleep first, if we can fucking ever do anything. Yeah, see, there you go. Go ahead, do that. Just, uh, I don't, I don't remember what grass is. I can never remember. Like, I feel like it would be considered special because of Solar Beam, but I mean, you also have Razor Leaf, so it's like... Usually you can lure down to one move that defines that type. Like, Flamethrower. Okay, that's special, so there you know, you know Fire's a special type. Lick, that's how you know Ghost is a special type. But when you think of the defining move for Dark, you think of Bite. But for whatever reason, it's considered special, and that's what makes it dumb. Could try Nightshade. Nightshade would be considered physical. Leftovers? Perfect. I had a feeling it wouldn't be so easy. We're gonna do that, and we're gonna try and dream you to this Meganium and just as quick uh, do as much as we can while doing as little as we can. Because the problem again came down to the fact that, like, we did this fight, it just took five years. And now that we're like a little bit more sensible and we know what we're doing, we can get it done a little bit easier, but we still gotta be cautious to their strategy because we know what it is. See, that's why I'm doing it. And I don't wanna take the chance of it like using Psychic and that not being enough. So that's why I'm trying to do this. There, now I know for a fact next turn it will be dead. Unless it has recover, then I've made a fool of myself. But this still turned out way better. And I'm not going to lie, I started getting nervous once Lita died, because I was like, oh god, how are we going to kill this Milotic? And thankfully, I came up with an idea. Okay, so Citrus Berry. I'm going to try and put it back to sleep. But Nightshade also makes this a lot easier, especially once we double team these guys. Because that's the idea. Because now it's two on one. And that's that. It's fine. There's no problem here. See, even if it missed, didn't matter. Because all we gotta do is Nightshade and then, like, Shadow Ball, and that's it. It shouldn't live. So. Just go for it like that. One thing I also think is funny, especially looking at, you know, this game, is game design. Because textures are really funny and scary, especially, like, if you're looking through texture files and you have no idea what associates what with what. So, like, think about all, and I mean all, the textures for all the Pokemon. Like, you're having to look through certain eyes just to find out, okay, this is the Zatu eye, and you gotta, like, you got, like, a fucking folder full of eyes or some shit like that. Like, that's so creepy to think about and weird, and, like, <laughs> it's crazy how nightmare-inducing something like that actually is when you really think about it. 
Same thing is applicable to music as well. Sound files, I should say. I've I've ripped apart games, and sometimes I will find silent files, and I'll be like, what in God's name is this supposed to be a file of? And then eventually it clicks in. But without the context, it's really creepy. Now, I don't remember if this had like a specific thing. I think I got lucky because they just kept doing the same thing over and over again. But this one did take me like I think two or three tries. I think it was something like Hot Shot, Pseudo Wudo, I Earthquaked myself. I remember that being a dumb mistake. I think we had Gengar because the Explod has Shadow Ball. And then I don't remember who the last one was. I think Slowbro's ideal. Because I remember being like, Zatu is a bad idea. I remember that. See, I didn't get to skip that cutscene because the cat decided she wanted attention, and her attention was to jump on my dresser. And instead of yelling at her, I decided to just point. And she's like, okay. She tried to jump to the bed, and like, just barely made it. Yeah, because I remember this. He always, She always starts off with, like, these two. And I remember always... I think I had Lita, actually. Yeah, because I'd paralyze it, right? Yeah, okay, that was a mistake. I should have grabbed Lita. Getting Magneton out is fine. The Exploud was weird, because I remember it had Shadow Ball. I'd always paralyze it every time I used Body Slam. First one, boom, that was done. And then again, it just kind of like, I lucked out, is basically what it came down to. But it was also because she just kept doing the same thing over and over again. There's Agron, her last one's probably Machamp. See, this was why I decided to go for Slowbro, because I was like, you know... Slowbro can kill an Agron pretty easily. That was, that was my idea, it was like he'll make more sense and I remember um I remember fucking what you call it Zatu being a bad idea so that was my process on why I grabbed Slowbro this time oh thank god quick claw kicked in cause I was gonna say I'm like I'm not so sure I'd be able to survive a shadow ball like I might be getting unlucky here but no if that's the case we'll be fine earthquake yeah that was the other reason he killed his own act she killed her own aggro I keep saying he yeah, I remember Earthquake, because she did that, and then this is where I was like, Whoa, Shell Bell Earthquake, that's actually kind of like an interesting strategy, because you're healing yourself for hitting multiple targets, which is strangely something I don't think I've ever considered before. But I also think it's funny, because like she's getting health for killing her own Pokemon. I don't know, it's just weird, but it's like it's kind of a cool strategy that I've never... Yeah, there you go, my champ. I've never thought about before. Alright, well good. Explode's dead, all it's down to is this Machamp, and we basically did this looking like a pro. All because I had audio problems. <laughs> if it weren't for that, we wouldn't have been redoing this. Also, I decided to change up my audio a tiny bit, because normally I would edit my audio a little bit in, uh, like, noise removal. I'd do it in Camtasia because that was just there. As for I was like, you know what, let me try and see how it works on Audacity. And I think it worked out pretty well. So, probably might not have even noticed the difference, but I think the audio sounds better. I've considered it because, like, OBS has phenomenal noise cancellation, but the problem is I can't rely on it recording me and the game at the exact same time because that's a bad idea. Because if I want to be able to mute myself, I can't do it because I'd have to mute the whole fucking game. So, that's a problem. And I can't do that. Goodbye, friend. So now it basically just comes down to are we going to lose all of our... No, because the last fight was easy. So we might... I don't want to say we're going to go through this without losing a continue. I could handle that. Believe you me, I could handle that. But, like... I don't know, part of me is like, are we just gonna lose five times in a row here? But... It was easy, so we shouldn't. 
really the the knowledge of counter mirror coat and one hit KO was like the main things that helped me. Yeah, that's right. She just had the the teams like this, and it was stupid. And I think what we did was we went with Stone Tower because Stone Tower because Plusilman and Volbeat and Illumuse, and then. Who else? I want to say Zatu, just because Zatu would work well with Earthquake. And then we can grab Hotshot and I guess Slowbro? Actually, you know what? No. It would be Stone Sour Lita, Hotshot, and Slowbro. That was it. Because so I was like, I don't know, Zatu doesn't feel like the best idea at all. I was trying to remember why. It was because Lita. Lita also is really, really good at dealing with earthquakes. She gets hit and she's like, damn. Who opened the door? And it's super easy because she just does this shit. And it's like, well, what? What do you expect? Like, this this is it. It's victory. Like, we're done. We got half of her team down in one turn. Plusil and Minin suck. I don't even think they're any good powered up together. Oh, this time they actually hit. Last time they didn't do anything. Holy hell! Oh, okay, maybe not. Well, that's funny. Well, guaranteed one of them should be going down. They're they're not... I don't know how much the their abilities actually power up. Because, see, I was gambling on Earthquake killing it. Fault, well, no, because Lita outspeeds him. I guess that was a dumb turn all around. I was like, yeah, Earthquake will kill him, and then... Frenzy Plant will hit the next target. Um, but again, I don't know how much their abilities power each other up because their stats are not particularly good at all. Like, even a little bit. Plusil's the better of the two, but, like, they're not good. Also, thank you for the timing. Don't do that. Do not attack your friend. Because now we can go ahead and do this to Lunatone. I also think... I remember hating Lunatone and Solrock when I first got introduced to Gen 3. Now I don't care so much. I like the idea of naming them like Mr. Shine and Mr. Bright. I think that's funny. And I'm also like, well, what if they decided to do more planets, though? Like, what if they did, like, Saturn? Why not Saturn? That would be an easy one. You could do Pluto, Rock and Ice, or something like that. Or like, there's it kind of writes itself. Like, there's so many times, there's so many simple things that they haven't done yet. And like, I'm telling you, I could make my own Pokemon generation based off of just very easy ideas they haven't done yet. And that kind of blows my mind. They need to just. Give me money. I don't know how easy it would be to get, like, a job in, like, Hi, I'm here and I'm creative, but that would be the thing that I would always want to do in something like this, because I feel like that's... I feel like that's... Oh, shit, don't do that. Um, Go ahead, Iron Tail, you, and then attack you. I feel like that's a position that's either, like, non-existent, or hard to attain but that's kind of like where my mind goes is it's like I could be a creative lead director or something like that like I want to come up with ideas and say do this this is smart this is a good idea maybe not like director lead like <laughs> co co chief vice president let someone else take the wheels, and then I'll be like, Yeah, do this thing too, because that's also smart. I don't know. We did that on our first try. The whole fucking under Coliseum on our first try. Yeah, we're recording. Alright. Well, damn.